People deluded, a quick one. Um, Ryan Sessegnon, now, I think he's a, his contract's up in 2020 and I would love Arsenal to go for him. I actually think Spurs should have a look at him as well. Um, not that they, they haven't and they probably will probably be the ones to get him, but Ryan Sessegnon, I think his example shows as to what I'm saying with young players. You need to be easy, you need to give them time, they're still developing. He was someone, if you go on the hype, not even, it's not even hype because he didn't hype himself. He is a good player. He can't control opinions. The same people I saw praising him as the next this, that and the other. Now, because Fulham and him are having a bit of a testing period, are saying he's overrated, he's this, he's that and he's the other. For me, he's a quality player and it serves as a lesson for patience. If you was preening him last season in the championship, he was making a difference, being a great player. But there was times he could have done better. These are things people are not looking at, similar to Reese Nelson at Hoffenheim when he was scoring goals and stuff. If he was watching these games, some of the times, if you look beyond the goal, there wasn't much into the performance or he could have improved or several things. This is what I'm saying with young players. You need to be easy. And people forgetting this guy is not... He's still 18. He's 19 in December, in May. He's still eligible to play for under 21s. And it's, it's a testament to him that people are forgetting his age because it shows that you've got ability. But you need to be easy with the guy. I don't know if he's going to be a future left back or left winger because I see, I've see i seen him play Buki at both. I've seen him have dodgy games at both. But I've seen him make the difference at, at left wing, actually coming inside and I wouldn't say 10, but being that sort of creative thing, I've seen him do that well, I've seen him play at fullback well, so we'll see how he develops, man, he, he's had a testing period, ultimately it's a good education what he's going through now in that I'm sure he would have loved to have seen your scene with Callum hudson Odoi, Foden, well not Foden, soon to be Foden, but Jaden Sanjo, you would have thought he would have been one of the next ones up and there's Euro 2020 soon and he is one that England should have their eyes on in terms of bringing in, but the form there, his form hasn't been good enough. His contract is up in, in, up in, t in 2020. Surely Fulham cash in. Now I say surely because if I was him, I would actually want to play Premier League football again for another team. It depends where you go. I think a team like Bournemouth would be good for him. I think Spurs would be good for him as well. But is he guaranteed to play week in, week out at Spurs? I'm not too sure. Like he kind of has got at Fulham. He would get, he'd go somewhere else. Um, but he's out in 2020, like I said. So will Fulham cash in in the summer? I'm not too sure. I say I'm not too sure is because you'd believe, yes, it'd be suicide to a degree not to. But they've got to get a lot of the players off the book. So would the fans be happy going into the championship where the first thing is being stability and bouncing back with half the squad gone and someone like Ryan Sessegnon gone? He's actually a big Fulham sort of man based. I don't know if he supported Fulham when he was younger, but he seems to really love the club. So I think he would want to stay and see it through. And also, I know it's the championship and he'd probably have to concede if he was playing championship that he probably wouldn't get a call up in Euro 2020. But again, playing week in, week out, week in, week out, you can't under you can't underestimate. It. He's got a hundred career appearances. I'm sure if he hasn't, he's 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 definitely got a hundred appearances or over it. Or if he hasn't, he's coming close to it. So he's coming into his own man. Um, you also can't rule out Fulham keeping him in the summer and then letting him go in the January. But you you've got to think discussions have been had either trying to get him to renew a deal or possibly thinking about selling him. To be fair with you, because. To let him walk for free next summer would be suicide, man. Because you're looking at someone that can bring a minimum in today's society, fifty football society, fifty million. Because we're all paying for potential. I always say the last signing, big money signing that I feel was worth it was Cristiano Ronaldo. Because it's gonna be Van Dijk now. But I don't. If you ask Van Dijk himself, I don't feel he was worth seventy five million. If you was to ask him that, he's a terrific defender and he is one of the best in the world and has shown himself to be that now. But if you was to ask him, is he worth seventy five million or is it over Liverpool paid over the odds? Yes, we know that's the market. That's nothing to do with him or the player. That's the market we're at now. I just feel in today's day and age, whether it's Van Dijk and the player he can become, Martial and the player he can become, Kylian Mbappe is gonna make that fee look so silly. But it's all for the fee. It's all that fee was paid paid for the player he can become. Name was a bit of an exception to the rule, but I genuinely believe the last signing, big money signing. Um, that was worth it was Cristiano Ronaldo because he was worth that 80 million in fact even you look now it looks like obviously they didn't but it looks like Madrid got bumped sort of thing we're going off topic man I think Spurs will go for him obviously with Spurs it'll be a good asset in the sense that the whole stadium business they've not been spending money anyways and Pochettino's been quite frustrated but if they're not spending money you've got to look at Levy man I think Poch would like him but if I was Levy sitting in his office I was think hmm, we've been trying to get Ryan Sessegnon. Let's actually double down on this in the summer because we've got the stadium. Ryan Sessegnon's got potential to be an, a, a Spurs first-team regular, an England first-team regular. 
The fans will take to him whether he's a left back or left winger remains to be seen. But either one, he'd become a terrific player. And you want the best players in the Premier League, and he'd become one of them by default if that's the same case. Um, and with the stadium stuff, you might have to sell assets or players might be sold on. So we can't rule out. Obviously, there's always talk with Ericsson going Madrid, Delhi going everywhere, Kane going everywhere. But potentially with Ryan Session, he was not 19, not 19 until May. If they was to sign him in the summer or whatnot, do you see what I'm saying? They'd have an asset there that potentially that they could sell on for profit and help with the stadium debts or, or whatever if it did come because he's 19 now. They could have him for four years and he'd still be only 22 or whatever people or, or 23 or 22, 23, whatever. Do you see it? So he'd still he'd still even have these best years in front of him. Also, you've got we obviously you've got to remember the likes of Cesc Fabregas, Rooney, etc. Playing early, kind of peaking early. But I don't think, pardon me, I don't think that'd be the case with him, man. I think he's perfect for Spurs. He's perfect for us. I'd have a look at look at him. The only issue is, um, where is Arsenal going to play him? Is he going to play at left back? Is he going to play at left wing? Um, I'm not too sure, but. Yeah, man, it's someone I'd definitely have a look for. And obviously, we gave them Callum Chambers on loan, so we've got to have some good relations with their staff, so maybe that can tip the balance for us. For what it's worth, I think he stays at Fulham. I think he's signing a new deal at Fulham, but I thought just by looking at his contract, I might as well make a vid, so I did. People, thank you for watching, but I'm out now. People deluded. <laughs>